So, what is the difference between our heart failure drugs and your electrical conductivity drugs or your hypertensive drugs versus your, um, your drugs that cause decrease chronotropic? And it gets so confusing. Ah, okay, so let's, let's um, make sense of it here. So there's really two reasons or two mechanisms that put pressure or increased um, stress on the heart itself. Your heart has a rate. Okay. How many beats per minute? That's the rate. That's called your heart rate. That's what we call our contractility as well. How much contractions is taking place? How many times does the heart pump in one minute? Also known as your cardiac output, how much blood flow is coming out of the heart? So, what's the rate? How many times is it contracting per minute? And, let's see here, how much pressure is put on the heart? This is what's known as work load itself, okay? So pressure, also known as workload. So we can say, let's just say you went to work, okay? And you're a, I don't know, you're a accountant. How many accounts have you done in that day? Let's just say you're balancing books or you're doing someone's taxes. How many clients have you done in an hour? How many accounts have you kind of closed in an hour? That's your rate, okay? But how much pressure, how much work does it take to close one account? What if some accounts are like really, really small, you just make two adjustments and you close it? How heavy are these let's say accounts. Same thing goes in terms of, let's say you're moving boxes at Home Depot or a warehouse. How many boxes have you put away in an hour or in a minute, let's say? How heavy are these boxes to move? How much? So what if your workload and you have like a lot of pressure being pushed on the heart, your rate is gonna have a harder time pushing all that blood out. In terms of your heart, your rate is really talking about your contractility, your electrical conductivity as well. Your pressure and workload is really how much work your heart has to do to push against all that pressure in the vascular system. So, which ones affect your volume and your pressure. So let's go into that here. So we're going to go over volume only. Volume only here. Okay. We're not talking about rate or electrical stimuli. No electrical stuff going on here. Uh, no contractility, no electricity, so no electric, okay, no contractility, no SA node, no SA node, or AV node. We're not going to be talking about that right now. What we're talking about is how much volume, 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 how much pressure is being pushed on that heart, and which drugs cause a decrease in this pressure. 
So, ACE inhibitors. Inhibitors. Also ending in PRIL. These guys cause your decrease in volume. It doesn't have anything to do with the rate or contractility or electricity or SA node or AV node. There's no electrical conduction with prills. It just lets out fluid volume only. And I do a really good job on a, um, on a video called Club Raz, the uh, renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system where ACE inhibitors just break apart the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, almost like the uh, management of a nightclub. So, kind of fun. So next, guys, let's see here, is your loop diuretics. Diuretics. Also known as your mind drugs like ferrosamide. So ferrosamide. Loop diuretics are like Lasix. Lasix is a anti, um, what am I saying? It's a potassium wasting diuretic. Diuretic just means that it's going to have your patient pee a lot. And it acts on the distal tubules of the kidneys, the descending loops of Henle. Fancy words for the little um, tubes in the kidneys. It just lets them release fluid. It lets them release fluid from um, your kidneys themselves. So it's stopping your anti-diuretic hormone and releasing the kidneys. It's kind of bypassing all of the mechanisms that hold on the fluid in your body. So we're decreasing the volume, not talking about rate, not talking about electricity, no SA node, no AV node. Volume only. Workload only. Okay? So watch your potassium with this patient. Also watch your DIG toxicity because the potassium is going low. So tell your patient to eat potassium fortified foods. But uh, I'll, I'm going to make a separate video for loop diuretics themselves. Okay? Your last type of diuretics are your thiazide, like hydrochlorothiazide, and your potassium sparing diuretics, sparing, also known as spironolactone, and um, aldos, I'm sorry, spironolactone, or aldactone, that's your potassium sparing diuretic. Potassium sparing diuretic just means that it's blocking aldosterone, the bouncer of the nightclub, pretty much the, uh, the main hormone in the kidneys that holds back sodium. Spironolactone is that potassium sparing diuretic. Doesn't affect the rate, doesn't affect the electrical conductivity, does not affect the AV or SA node, okay?